Greetings, this is Yasha Ben Israel coming back at you again with a message from the mighty Hebrew. Now, what we have here is we're gonna I'm gonna share some inbox personal messages from the mighty Hebrew. You know, we give each other information all the time, and I just passed them some videos that I made about several, several Israelites that existed known to record prior to uh, William Crawdy, F.S. Saunders, and, I mean, F.S. Cherry, and uh, Saunders. So, uh, Saunders, Crawdy, and Cherry, and Ford. Excuse me, Saunders. And, anyway, you, you get the message. I, I'm just waking up, but check it out, y'all. All right, he says, watch this. Here is proof that there are slaves before Prophet Cherry and William S. Crawdy that stated that they were Hebrew Israelite sovereign nationals. Let's open this up here, see what we get. This is called an overview of the black Hebrew Israelites, February 3rd, 2016, by Dr. D.A. Horton. Article originally posted on dahorton.com on September 26, 2015. He said, heads up, there is no one set of beliefs that the black Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, or Hebrew Israelites fall under. This blog will highlight a few of the movements that are often identified in having similar, similar beliefs. Okay, this is what I want to focus on here. He says that the founder, okay, most groups that identify themselves with being black Hebrew Israelites, residing in America traced their inception back to the pre-Civil War era. You're talking about like the, 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 the late 1700s, man, right? One of the first preachers known to harmonize the American slaves with the biblical account of the Israelites was Martin Prosser a slave preacher in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. In 1800, he helped his brother Gabriel organize what is known as Gabriel's Rebellion, the first known leader to organize a movement around the connection between American slavery and the Israelite narrative. Recorded in the Bible was William Saunders Crawdy. And then we go down to William Crawdy, right? F.S. Uh, F. Cherry. You know, eight, William Crawdy, that's 1909, right? You know, that's his death, I think, in congregations. Yeah, so I think William Crawdy died in 1908, right? So we're looking at then we're looking at 1866, F.S. Crawdy, right? He started his organization, 1866. And then we got 1919, we got the commandment keepers with Rabbi Wentworth Matthews, right? Then you going off into the 60s. Where you got uh, uh, Ebner Ben Yamin, which is Abba Bivens, you know, and with Abba Bivens, you got guys like Ben Ami, uh, uh, Prince Aziel Ben Israel, you got guys like Elder Eliyahu, Boy, and the Boy Brothers, you know. Uh, you got Elder Hodges, you know, all from Chicago, the Chicago, the Midwestern guys. Then you had guys like Elder Neely from Detroit, Michigan, all around that time. You had guys like uh, Elder Rowley from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, around that time. So you had, you know, the 60s was really, really popping. 
you know, Ben Aminum came up out of that, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. He came about in the 70s and 80s. You know, so these are just some of the groups, you know, that gave birth to the Israelite movement. Just making it quick. So the Prince writes, you had Martin Prosser and his brother Gabriel Prosser in 1800 CE in Richmond, Virginia. These two Hebrew Israelite sovereign nationals manifested what was called the Gabriel Rebellion. And this is a fact, y'all. Here's a picture of Gabriel Prosser. We're going to stop this real quick. We'll get back. Maybe we can convict. So we're getting back up here to Gabriel Prosser here. Here's a, here's a picture, a drawing of Gabriel Prosser. See what that man looked like. Uh, African, black, Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, African-American man. 1775, 1800. See, I knew that when I started going down this route, I was going to draw the mighty Hebrew out because this is his lane. He is the guy who inspired me. I've never heard nobody go as deep off into the history as the mighty Hebrew. Uh, he is awesome. We're going to look off into this video here. We're going to check this out, too. We're going to take a look off into that to Gabriel Prosser, the Hebrew Israelite conspiracy to fight back on YouTube. Okay. It, said, it talks about Gabriel Prosser was the... Uh, Israelite slave leader of a successful revolt in Richmond, Virginia during the summer of the 1800s. Or summer of 1800s. Okay, let's take a look at here, see what we have here. This is a YouTube video. We reserve the rights to use these clippings for entertainment, educational, and critiquing After purposes. the invention of the cotton gin, the threat of sale loomed larger than ever before and laws were passed to keep slaves under a tighter watch. Some resisted by running away, others by stealing or refusing to work. A very few saw no other alternative but to take up arms. One was a slave named Gabriel, who stole a pig and was hauled into a courthouse outside Richmond, Virginia in 1799. Gabriel was a pig. Instead of accepting the abuse, which of course every slave was supposed to accept, uh, he threw the man to the ground, uh, wrestled him to the ground, and, and bit off part of his left ear. That, of course, was a capital crime. Pig stealing was a common occurrence. Uh, biting white people was something that that it was not encouraged for Black Virginians to do. Gabriel was convicted of attacking and maiming the white man who caught him. To deter others from such crimes, he was publicly humiliated, branded, and forced to spend a month in jail. As Gabriel sat in his cell, he decided that the time was right to organize the slaves of Richmond and strike against those who were holding them in bondage. The only time that slaves would have had any mobility without um, the most rigid um, observation of whites would have been on a Sunday, would have been at night. Religious gatherings could have, in some cases, provided an opportunity for people to meet. We must never forget that any kind of move toward liberation among blacks was a question of life and death. Wow. Like all revolutionaries, Gabriel seemed to have very little concern for violence and danger. 
he was uh, six foot two, six foot three, in a time of relatively shorter men. He was a blacksmith, so he was a man of enormous strength. He was described as having scars on his face. He was missing most of his front teeth, and I suspect that 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 came from mixing it up in the quarters with other slaves. He was a man who people instinctively tended to follow, Uh, and, and he apparently feared very little. After his release, Gabriel began hammering out instruments of war, turning shovels into swords and molding bullets. Through most of the year 1800, he recruited soldiers for a rebel army. All the whites were to be massacred, except the Quakers, the Methodists, and the Frenchmen, and they were to be spared on account of their being friendly to liberty. They intended also to spare all the poor white women who had no slaves. Ben Woolfolk, conspirator. Obviously, he was not a naive man. He realized that that this would be black freedom born of white fear, uh, not out of white magnanimity. One thousand men was to be raised from Richmond, six hundred from Ground Squirrel Bridge, and four hundred from Goochland. The business of the insurrection had so far advanced that we were compelled, even if discovered, to go forward. Solid spirit. Gabriel decided his troops would move at midnight on August 30th, 1800, carrying a flag with the motto, Death or Liberty. We can imagine what it was like on that day in August in 1800 with scores of African Americans gathering on a Sunday to create this rebellion with picks and axe and knives and clubs and what it must have been like for them, prepared to strike and yet unable to strike. That very evening, one observer wrote, there came on the most terrible thunderstorm accompanied with an enormous rain. Rivers swelled, roads and bridges washed away, and when it became clear that the business as it was called, would be impossible in the storm. Gabriel tried to postpone the revolt, but before morning, the plot was betrayed by two slaves. What's phenomenal is how close it got. If the accounts and the uh, inferences we can make about the numbers, that had lasted so long before um, uh, any betrayal. Is, is quite extraordinary. Gabriel went to trial on October 6th, 1800. He refused to testify or to explain his actions, but one of the rebels did make a statement. I have nothing more to say in my defense than what General Washington would have had to offer had he been taken by the British and put to trial. I have adventured my life in endeavoring to obtain the liberty of my countrymen, and I am a willing sacrifice in their cause. And I beg, as a favor, that I may be immediately led to execution. I know that you have predetermined to shed my blood. Why then, all this mockery of a trial... That was the YouTube video called Gabriel Prosser and the Hebrew Slave Conspiracy to Fight Back by Yasha. By Yasha Ya LA. Go check it out, y'all. And this was before the Prophet William S. Crowdy and before Prophet Frank S. Cherry. Checkmate. We got him. Let's see what what the what the elder has to say here. Not only that, right? This family, like Gabriel, his brother. 
brother Martin, his other brother Solomon, they whole family knew that they were Israelites and that they was teaching the other slaves that they were Israelites and they rebelled in 1800. This changes the whole game. I'm just warming the fuck up. The black Jews, the religious challenge or politics versus religion. This here book is by Ulysses San Tamaria. Okay. European Journal of Sociolo Sociology, Archives Europeanes de Sociologies. That's the French. And this is the book. It said we can read and download it through the school of the library. But this here is a preview of the book. We can take a look at the preview. We'll see what we have here. It says that amongst the, it says that black Jews, the religious challenge or politics versus religion. Amongst the many religious groups to be found in the United States, one is remarkable and very little known, the black Hebrews. This group shares structural characteristics among so many minorities, but it is also distinguished by a dual identity derived from the experience of slavery and the cultural mix uh, specific to the New World. They are products of two eventful histories. There is the history of their race and the main events of which are well known as black people brought from Africa, they were reduced to slavery, then freed. Their destiny is linked to that of the United States where they form their second racial community. The other history is cultural that of the Jewish tradition brought by the immigrants from Europe. The spread of this tradition amongst the black community is more difficult to gap. We will attempt both to improve our understanding of the interaction of the dual identity with the nature of black American Judaism and to pay particular attention to the study of the cultural influence of the, Ju of the Judaism of the Mediterranean basin of the people of black Africa, like the Ashantis who were historically in contact with Jews trading in these areas. These areas of Africa supply vast numbers of blacks forcibly deported as slaves to the American continent. Who then are these black Hebrews whose existence was only brought to our attention between 1960 and 1965? They came from the, uh, they came from black, the black American world and are mainly to be found in the ghettos where they claim to be the true believers in the law of Moses and the descendants of those who conclude the alliance with Yahweh, that is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, scattered throughout the big cities of the East and the center, like New York and Chicago, also Detroit, there are in the United States as a whole several thousand blacks, actually a few, a few million uh, blacks that believe in Judaism, but the ideology of the beliefs within this apparently homogenous community, oh, we got to go get the book, people. That was just a little tease. Let's back on out of that, see what we got here, what else he got here for us. We checked that one out. Give you a big likes on that, pal. Big heart up on that one. Here's another book here. He he references he he has for us. It's called Toward the Typology of Black Hebrews: Religious Thought and Practice. We want to see how long. Oh, it's not that long, so we can get a 
quick little read out here. This article explores, oh, 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 excuse me, by Andre E. K., Journal of Africana Religions, Jabari, which are Africana Studies, Pseudo Self, which are Pseudo Self. Uh, this article explores the problem of conceptualizing Black Judaism as a religious tradition within the African American community, briefly outlining the dominant discourse course that has framed Black Judaism as primarily a social political movement couched in Black nationalist messianic language. It discusses the need for a definition and conceptualization, conceptualization of Black Judaism that provides an entry into the analyst that does fall into the discursive trap of legitimacy-focused research. Again, he says that Black Judaism that provides an entry into an analysis that does not fall into the discursive trap of legitimacy-focused research. The article offers a definition of Black Judaism that is situated within the larger structure of Black religion, and it explores the importance of nomenclature, nomenclature in regards to ethno-religious identity and religious practice within the diverse treads of Hebrew Israelite religion. Finally, a typological framework is offered for the study of Black Judaism that gives consideration to both theological unity and the diversity of Black Hebrew religious thought and practices. Keywords Afro Jewish studies, Black Judaism, Hebrew Israelite, Black Hebrews, Black Jews. Copyright 2014 by Pennsylvania State University. All rights are reserved. And again, I do reserve the rights to use these uh, clips for entertainment, educational, and critiquing purposes. That's the website. You can see it up there at, top, at the top where it says scholarlypublishingcollective.org. Back on out of that. Ah, oh, he didn't lace this up today, what we have here. Oh, and we got another source he gave us, academic.oup.com. Okay, it says, too equivalent to Israelism, inheritance, Freemasonry, and the ancient Israelites. Gabriel Prosser, a slave who wore his hair long and identified himself an Israelite, meant to have a genealogical or rather racial connection to the Israelites. We need to get that book, y'all. He's given us these sources. Thank you, uh, 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 Prince. Prince Landine is back on out of that. See what else he gave us. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And now we talk. We, he asked me to read it. Yes, we did read it. And we will take that to HOK. Uh, what we have here. Hey, sure, I'm going to take those uh, information and I'm going to make a video out of it. And I'm going to give you mad shout outs. There it is. The video is made, Doc. Yes, that's Fire Ock. And I sure as hell will take that over there and bang them right on out with it. Okay. And it said, so I did that because we are Voltroned up. Plus, I spanked Sardinetta's ASS at the end. With the banning of the Israelites in 1492 by Askia Muhammad, that explained why no Torah or any other Israelite evidence existed in Western Africa. But we are the evidence, and there is much evidence. Uh oh. He said, Get this book below. Yeah, brother, I'm, I'm making a video right now with this, brother, and you're in it. 
you know. So I'm just letting you know if you got anything you like to say, just uh, repeat it back on the uh, hookup. The book here is by Dirk, D-I-E-R-K, Lang, L-A-N-G-E. It's called Ancient Kingdoms of Western Africa. In uh, Africa, let's open that up. Africa-centered and Canaanite Israelite perspectives. We need to get that book, y'all, by Derek Lang. I'm going to get it. This is this this is going to have some powerful powerful tools in it. Uh, yeah, because these are sources. We got to have sources. Once we have sources, you source up, hey, you out cold. You know, Derek Lang, I've read some of his material before. He's out cold. He said, this book crushes all their shit hands down. These are the words of Prince Charlandine. I can't, how you pronounce that first name? Prince uh, Matazarayim Yasha Allah. That being stated, this is Yashab in Israel, a.k.a. Terry Whitfield. Like, share, and we need to get those subscriptions up so I can start monetizing, y'all. So once we get those subscriptions up, then the numbers is going to come. I just need those subscriptions so I can go ahead on and start doing what we need to do so we can get this thing together. Like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. This is called The Message from the Mighty Hebrew.